Hello there, everybody. Dan Calloway, or Data Pioneer, here from the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And today I want to show you around a new distribution that I've uh, created. It's a spin on Linux Mint 19.2 Tina, and it's called Dark Vader 1909 OS. I think you'll like it. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I'll show you uh, a system setup and review of Dark Vader 1909 uh, OS. And its uh, name is derived from the fact that it's a very customized theme of Linux Mint 19.2. Uh, based on Debian and Ubuntu, uh, and it's a dark, very dark theme, hence the name Dark Vader, a play on words for Darth Vader. And um, I will uh, walk you through the process of how I set it up in Virtual Machine and uh, launch it, and then we'll take a look at it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's look at Dark Vader 1909 OS from Data Pioneer here at the Linux Unix Tech Channel. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm in my standard virtual machine 6.0 manager, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and set up Dark Vader uh, 1909 OS. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on Machine and New, and I'm going to go ahead and title this Dark Vader 1909 OS. Okay, and I'm going to give it the standard uh, 4096 or 4 gigs of RAM and put that in there. Let's go ahead and click Create. Uh, I'm going to give it 32 gigabytes of uh, VDI disk space and dynamically allocated here. Uh, and we all know what dyna dynamically allocated means. If you don't, uh, I'll go over that one more time. If you select the fixed size, then it stays, starts at 32 gigabytes and stays at 32 gigabytes the whole time uh, that you're running it. Uh, and if you click dynamically allocated, it starts out smaller and builds up to a maximum of 32 gigabytes. And that's, that's the way that works. So we're going to do a dynamically allocated here. And so let me go ahead and click Create. And we've got it created now. So let's go ahead and hit that Settings button and open up our settings interface. Uh, don't need to do anything here in general. Under system, uh, let's untick the floppy drive and let's uh, select hard disk and move it up so that when we reboot the system uh, it will see the hard drive and not the optical drive here, uh, which was what we're using to install. Right, let's click display and let's move this up to uh, full 128 megabytes of video memory. We're going to give it uh, uh, one monitor, and we're going to select a VBOX uh, VGA monitor. Uh, the chances of it coming up to a full 1920 by 1080 uh, resolution, uh, which is what I have, a widescreen monitor, uh, is going to be enhanced by doing that. Let's enable the 3D acceleration. Uh, under storage, let's select that empty uh, optical drive, and let's select it over here. And let's choose the virtual optical file, and we're going to select Dark Vader 1909 OS, which, by the way, this ISO I created using System Back, uh, which is built into, uh, or you can be installed into, rather, Linux Mint 19.2. I love System Back. Um, Time Shift is another one you can use, but System Back is good because System Back allows you to create ISO files or image files, and that's what I did to create Dark Vader. 1909. So let's select that Dark Vader 1909 OS uh, ISO and click open. So we've got it loaded now. Let's go down to audio and let's enable the audio output. Uh, network, let's go ahead and select uh, one adapter, enable the adapter, network adapter. Let's do a uh, bridged adapter here and click uh, USB and select USB 3.0. Click OK. And we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and launch this thing. 
I'm going to hit the launch or start button here to launch it. And when it comes up, I'm going to change the view as I normally do here to full screen. Um, I like full screen over the normal screen. All right, so here I'm going to do a boot uh, in system installer. I'm going to go straight to the installer here. And um, so it's, it's started the installation process. Now, as I said, it uses system back to do the install. And so uh, it'll come up here in a moment, and system back will run. We'll go ahead and set up our usual interface, and we'll get going with it. As I said, it is based on Linux Mint 19.2. Backyard Tech did a very nice review of uh, Dark Vader 1909 OS for me a couple of days ago. Check out uh, Backyard Tech on the Backyard Tech channel. Uh, great guy, great mate of mine in Australia. He, he does a great job with his videos. And he did a super job um, looking at Dark Vader in a uh, not the uh, virtual box environment, but he used ESXi to do that, and he did a, did a super job on it. So check that out. Check out Backyard Tech um, channel on YouTube. Okay, so it's coming up now, and uh, should be coming up to System Back Interface here in a moment. It does take a few moments to load. And here it comes. Okay, so we've got the system install screen up in front of us. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my name. And the username I want to use is Data Pioneer. Uh, I want to use a password for the account, of course. So let me go ahead and put that in. Okay, it matches. Let's put in a root password. All right, and the host name, I'm just going to give it the name of the computer. Here I'm going to call this uh, Dark Vader 1909 OS VM. And let's click Next. And the usual here, uh, delete this, and then uh, set up. I'm just going to do a straight uh, install here. Um, for partitioning, I'm just going to do uh, the root uh, partition and nothing else, uh, ext4. Let's go ahead and set that up and let's click uh, next. And it's ready to install the live image. I'm going to click start and we're going to begin that. Now, this is a system back installation. It does take some time to uh, set this up. I'm not going to um, uh, stay with this the whole way through. Uh, we will come back when it is completed. So, uh, it's installing now, and when it's finished, I'll come back. Okay, we are at 90% uh, right now in the install process with System Back, and so I thought I would come back and uh, walk you through the rest of this uh, setup process uh, for. Dark Vader 1909 OS. Uh, we're at 95%, just about ready to complete this, and then we'll uh, do the setup of the user accounts and other things we need to do, the time, the time zone settings and, and such, uh, and then we'll get into Dark Vader 1909 OS, take a look at it. Um, this hasn't taken very long. It's only taken maybe five minutes, but I, I didn't want to let you sit and or have to sit and watch the whole process. You've seen the system back installed before. It's pretty straightforward. All right, so it's wrapping up this process now. And shouldn't be very much longer, and we'll be getting into the remaining part of the setup. All right, so the system install is completed. Let's go ahead and click OK. And let's go ahead and reboot.
do have, uh, as I said, four gigs of RAM here, so it should be fairly responsive. Um, and we'll take a look at, uh, we'll open up HTOP and when we get into it, and we'll take a look and see uh, how efficient uh, uh, Dark Vader uh, 1909 OS is. Hopefully it's going to come up to a full screen resolution of 1920 by 1080 uh, because I am using that VBOX VGA uh, graphical setting in uh, VirtualBox 6.0 Manager. So it should, should do that. If not, uh, at the sign-in it may be a smaller screen, but it then should come up to the full screen, hopefully. We'll see when we get in here. And, uh, okay, so this is the first screen that we get. I'm going to put in the password. And we should get our Dark Vader uh, screen coming up here on the next part. Did come up to 1920 by 1080. That's really good. Really like that. Uh, VirtualBox 6.0 Manager. I've, I'm really happy with VirtualBox 6.0. It's got a lot of improvements. All right, so this is one thing about uh, launching virtual machines. You have to be very patient. I've learned over the years, and I've run very, you know, a lot of virtual machines in um, in VirtualBox 6.0 and 5.x uh, prior to the 6.0 version. Uh, I have installed uh, many, many OSs in bare metal as well. Uh, one that's my daily driver is uh, Salient OS, which is a variation of uh, Arch Linux, uh, and um, it's a it's basically a scratch from scratch installation of Arch, um, and that's done by uh, system uh, by uh, by robot. And uh, anyway, it's taking its time, but it'll be there in a moment. Here it comes. Okay, uh, I get this uh, video driver issue. It's my system. It's, uh, you know, it's it's significant with my system only. Okay, so here we are. We're at uh, Dark Vader 1909 OS uh, screen, and uh, I'd forgotten we already set up the accounts and everything, so we didn't have to do that. And so uh, we're looking at the screen now, and we're going to get into uh, here into this system. We're going to take a look at it, see what we have. Uh, it is Wednesday, September the 11th, uh, 9.42 here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Uh, we've got the start menu over here. Uh, we've got um, uh, the desklets here. We've got Firefox, and we've got the terminal, and we have uh, Thunar File Manager here. We have four workstations set up over here. We have the Update Manager, um, which I rarely use, but uh, the occasion I do use it. We've got the uh, printer's interface here. Um, we have the removable drives. We have the network interface here. We have the audio, and then, of course, the calendar uh, that we have set up, and the date and time settings, and I don't need to change that because those are correct. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. Let's click the Start menu, bring up the Whisker menu here. And this is the dark theming that uh, goes along with Dark Vader 1909. Um, I really like it. And, um, 
of course, uh, you've got your usual along the left-hand side here, which is your uh, shut down the computer. If I click that, I can either suspend, restart, shut down, or cancel. I'm going to go ahead and cancel it. Um, you've got your uh, logout, and you've got your lock screen. You've got the files here. You've got terminal. You have the system settings. If I click that button uh, for system settings, it brings up the settings interface so that you can change the appearance, uh, effects, font selection, and themes. If I click backgrounds, uh, it shows you the full range of what we have. This is the theme that I'm using here of the desk, or the not the theme, but the background that I'm using for uh, what you're seeing out here on the screen now on the uh, Dark Vader 1909 OS. Uh, if I go up here, there's a host of uh, Linux Mint backgrounds that you can select from because this is based on Linux Mint. If I come down here uh, to Terra, you've got a whole bunch of backgrounds that you can select from here from the Terra interface. Here from Tessa, you've got another uh, gamut here of backgrounds that you can use. So we get a lot of backgrounds that we can choose from. In my uh, spin here, I wanted to make sure that we had a full selection. So one of the things I wanted to concentrate on here with this particular OS is to give you a lot of possibilities. And I hope I've done that. I hope I've accomplished that. Here's some more backgrounds that we have here under the Tina, which is the uh, version of Linux Mint that Dark Vader is based on. Uh, and then, of course, if you don't like any of these, you can select your own pictures uh, folder here and... Uh, and select those as well. So if you have pictures that, that you want to do of your own, you can do that. And there, I don't have anything there. All right, let's go ahead and close that. Let's bring up, um, this is the theming that we have. And then, of course, Firefox. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what we have here under Accessories. We have the Archive Manager. We have the Belena Etcher. I install that. Uh, calculator, Character Map, Disks. Document Viewer, Files, Fonts, Image Viewer, Passwords and Keys. Uh, I do have Redshift, Screenshot, uh, Text Editor, USB Image Writer, Stick Formatter, and Virtual Keyboard. Under Graphics, uh, I've got a host of things here. I've got the eBook Viewer. I've got the GNU uh, Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP, uh, version 10. LRF viewer, I've got pics in there, and I've got simple scan as well for your scanner if you have a capable scanner, uh, 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 printer with the scanner capability, which I do. All right, so internet, I've got FileZilla, and uh, I've got GFTP, uh, file transfer protocol client as well. Firefox web browser, let's take a look at the web browser, at the version we have. And it should be the latest version of uh, Quantum. And uh, quick close this. And let's see, we've got, uh, let's go over here to the pancake and select it. And if we come down to uh, help, get Kadaza as the home page. And about Firefox, you can see that we're running Quantum 69.064 bit, which that is the latest version. I set up kadaza.com, uh, by the way, for you for your uh, home page by default. If you go to another tab here and you select the home, you'll get back to Kadaza. I like Kadaza because it's got a lot of possibilities here for, um, you know, selecting various things. Um, one of the things I like to do is go out here for computer and tech and select that. And I like to select tech blogs or tech news as well, okay? Uh, so under news, you can select tech news. And here you've got, uh, you know, various things that you can select. Here, TechCrunch, for instance, if I select that square, it's going to bring up the TechCrunch website. And so you've got, a, you know, you get at your fingertips here. Uh, you don't have to go searching the web for your news and other things. And so I set that up for you and hope you like it. Let me know what you think of it. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, by the way, go ahead and subscribe to it. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that up thumb up uh, on the video. And when you do subscribe, go ahead and select that bell so that you're notified every time I upload a video. So let me go ahead and close Firefox web browser. Let's get out here on the start menu again. 
And under Internet, we have, let's continue on, we have HexChat interface. We've got LifeRia, which is a, uh, uh, R, it's an RSS, uh, real simple syndication feed, which you can load. It's an application that brings your news right directly to you in the interface. Thunderbird Mail, which is your mail client, and then Transmission BitTorrent client as well. Under Office, I gave you uh, some options here as well. Uh, you've got Calendar, you've got Calibre, which is a uh, manager of your PDFs and eBooks. Um, here under that, you have an eBook editor, which is a part of Calibre. Um, got Free Office uh, 2018 Suite, which is Plan Maker, Presentations, and Text Maker. This is equivalent to Microsoft Word, this is equivalent to PowerPoint, and this is equivalent to Excel in Office Suite. And then you've got the LibreOffice Suite, which I'm not really, I really don't care a lot about. Uh, I'm like backyard tech. I don't care much about LibreOffice. So, um, but it's there if you like it. And if you want to use it, go ahead and use it. Under sound and video, I've got Audacity. I've got Avidamux, Xfalso. Uh, I love Handbrake. So I've got Handbrake, which is a an application I use for uh, working with my audio video files. Uh, transcoding those. Media Player, I've got Quadlibet, which is equivalent to um, the Apple version of iTunes. It's, it's a music and uh, sound manager. Um, Rhythmbox Player, Simple Screen Recorder, and VLC Media Player. And then if you're a VocoScreen fan, you can uh, work with VocoScreen here out of the box. You get a lot out of the box here to choose from. Universal Access, I've got On Board. Uh, administration, you've got the backup tool, BleachBit and Root BleachBit, Disk User uh, or Usage Analyzer, you've got the Driver Manager, HTOP, let's take a look at HTOP, and you can see we're running 753 megs out of 4 gigs, not bad at all for this system. Um, it's not heavy, it's not as heavy as GNOME 3, for instance, uh, but uh, uh, Linux Mint is known to be a little heavy. But this isn't bad. Memory of 753 megs out of 4 gigs. CPU is doing okay, 6% right now. We've got 93 tasks, 169 threads. We've got one task running. Load averages are really good, uh, 0.23, 0.72, and 0.63. We've got an uptime of about 12 minutes right now in this system. So this is HTOP, and it's already there for you out of the box. Let me go ahead and close that. And let's get back in, and under administration, let's continue on. We've got the login window, we have logs, we have power statistics, printers, software manager. Let's click software manager and take a look at that. And under software manager, um, I uh, it takes a few seconds to generate the cache, by the way, on software manager. Here we go. But look at what you have here. Uh, you've got editor's picks here of applications that you can select from. And then you've got these categories down here below. You've got accessories, internet, sound and video, fonts, office, system tools, games, if you're a gamer, programming, editor's picks, graphics, science and education, and flat pack. Okay. So if you take a look at internet, let's just uh, take a look at that. So you've, this is all the stuff you got. I mean, you got a bunch of stuff here, guys, uh, that you can select from here. Uh, so you, you're not going to be wanting for uh, things to choose from to install on your system. All right, let's close that. Let's get back into administration. And in addition to software uh, manager, you've got software sources, synaptic package manager. Uh, pretty much all of you are familiar with that. System monitor, system reports, and system back itself. This is what I use to create. Dark Vader, 1909. Terminal. Let's open up the terminal. And uh, this is the terminal that I have. And I've set it up and already themed it out for you. You can change it, of course, to your liking. Um, but I've got Data Pioneer, Dark Vader. Uh, let's do a Uname to see the version of uh, Uname R. And the version of the uh, kernel that we're running right now is 4.15.0-54 generic. And um, let's go ahead and exit out of that. All right, so let's get back in and administration again. Let's go down to where we left off. We're at the update manager. We're updating 
the system, if you like a GUI updater, I do the terminal. Users and groups, UX term and X term. For preferences here, uh, you've got a bunch of stuff in here. I'm not going to go through this whole thing. Uh, look at the selection that you have here out of the box for preferences. Theming, especially if you want to change the theming around. Places and recent files. Okay, so let's get back in here. I wanted to show you something in the terminal before we wrap up this uh, review here. Um, and in the terminal here, um, what I did was um, you can select um, to choose various aliases in your system. And normally they're set up in the, the root, uh, I mean in the uh, home directory, uh, in a .bash RC file, which is a hidden file. But what I did was I set up a separate one. And so let's look and see where we are. We're at Home Data Pioneer. And so let me do a cat on uh, .bash underscore aliases, which is the file I created. And here we go. Uh, and in this file, I said, use this file to add your custom aliases rather than the .bash RC file. Um, so you can leave that one alone and and you've got your other one, which is your .bash underscore aliases. I have aliases for updating the system. So it is just update. Uh, upgrade is just the word upgrade, which runs the sudo apt upgrade command. Removing packages is just the word remove, which is the sudo apt remove. For searching packages is this the word search. For installing packages is just install. So if you want to install something, you don't need to do sudo apt-get install-y. Just type in install in the package name, and that will install it for you. If you want to restart the system, just do reboot, and that automatically reboots it for you. All right, so let me clear the screen. Let me do an update. Let's just type in the word update here. Put in the password. And that should update our system for us. So I, I did those aliases so it would make it easy for you so you didn't have to worry about Do a lot of typing. And um, we shouldn't have any updates that I, I'm aware of. If we do, we won't run them. Uh, yeah, we do have some packages. It didn't, it didn't fetch a lot of stuff, but it got 42 things. I'm not going to go ahead and run it because it will take time to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out. But you can see that you, you can do update and you can do upgrade. Um, if you want to search for something, you can do search and GFTP, for instance. It's already installed, but uh, let me go and show you that. Put in the password correctly. And uh, it should uh, search for that particular uh, application or package, and there it is. It says it's already installed, and... Um, and so we don't need to reinstall it. All right, so let me go ahead and exit out of this. And um, I do have the various workstations set up over here, as I told you. Uh, and this is the Update Manager GUI interface as well. And so this has been a review. I've got a, and I've got a, uh, a clock out here on the desktop still for you. All right, so this has been a review of uh, Dark Vader 1909 OS based on Linux Mint 19.2 Tina. Uh, which is based on or derived from Debian and Ubuntu. So hope you enjoyed the review. I hope you enjoy Dark Vader 1909 OS. Go ahead and use it. Uh, I'll put a link on the, under the video for where to go grab the download. It is available on SourceForge, and it is available also as well on uh, GitHub. And so download it. Give it a sticky beak yourself. Give it a try. Take a look at it, and uh, I think you'll like it. So this is Data Pioneer at the Linux Unix Tech, Linux Use, uh, Unix tech channel. Um, hope you enjoyed this uh, system setup and review, product review of Dark Vader 1909 OS. And have a good day. Take care. Bye.